this is really alarming stuff and people will see why I say that in a moment. How did you become aware of this? A couple of years ago, I was talking with uh, military physicians, and uh, just in the course of conversation, it came up, you know, we're seeing a lot of people that are uh, coming in with infections, bacterial infections that are very hard to treat. And uh, this was just in passing and conversation. Uh, when I got home that night, I, I jotted it on my to look into list uh, as a reporter. Like a good reporter. Yeah. And uh, had hoped to pursue it sooner, but uh, had health issues of my own, had to go off to Florida and have a transplant. Uh, took about a year. I came back. I was amazed that nobody had, was pursuing this story. I started to look into it. Uh, there was one print piece that had been done. Uh, a fellow had written in uh, Wired Online. Um, had, had done some good research in the topic, but uh, I spoke with him and he said it's not getting any traction. And uh, I think when people see the reports, they'll be surprised that this is something that they've not heard of. We're about to see part one of your series. Give us the name of it and give us just the layman's, you know, uh, uh, minimum definition as a foundation. Okay. The bacteria is Acinetobacter baumani. Um, difficult to pronounce, but, but dangerous. Not particularly virulent. Uh, if you're in good health and uh, this was to uh, get onto your skin or into a wound, it might not be a problem. It's a problem with people who are the weakest of the weak. However, its particular genius is being able to gather resistance capabilities from any other bacteria around it. And in an environment where a lot of antibiotics are used, it uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan has been around a lot of other bacteria, has become more and more resistant. And uh, in a nutshell, the, uh, this requires very tough antibiotics to treat. And those antibiotics uh, bring with them the chance of some very serious side effects. All right. So with that as a setup, here is part one of Chaz's series, Insurgents in the Bloodstream. Since the beginning of the war in Iraq, this bloodstream insurgent, Acinetobacter Balmani, has been threatening the lives and health of men and women wounded in combat. That's why I lost my legs, so it sucks. A suicide bomber took one of David Emery's legs, Acinetobacter infection the other. We've never had a problem like this in Department of Defense hospitals that I know of before. Prior to the war, we were seeing one to two cases of Acinetobacter infection per year. Now that's much different. We're, we had hundreds of positive cultures over the last four years now. Of the infectious disease problems that have come out of the conflict, it is the most important complication we've seen. At first, researchers thought bomb blasts blew the bacteria into penetrating wounds. That's what they told Connie Emery had happened to her 22-year-old son, David. And they explained that that's what it was, and it comes from the soil over there, and that there's no antibiotic that, that will cure it. But examination of soil samples didn't seem to support the it's-in-the-dirt theory. Acinetobacters that grow in dirt are not the ones that cause these outbreaks in hospitals. Additional tests showed that most soldiers didn't seem to have the bacteria on their skin before they were hurt. So infectious disease specialists swabbed surfaces in medical facilities along casualty evacuation routes, from Baghdad to Landstuhl, Germany, to D.C. and San Antonio. There were bacteria, Acinetobacter bacteria, on hospital surfaces, like in operating rooms, on ventilator machines. How did it get there? Complex surgeries being done closer to front lines than ever before, saving the lives of many who in previous wars would have died. But amidst multiple bloody and hectic operations, it's difficult to keep treatment centers germ-free. And in the process, there's not 100% of the controls, despite a great effort by the military medical people, uh, there's a high risk of infection anyway. Transmission from forward hospitals was certainly part of the problem. A problem made tougher by Acinetobacter's particular genius, stealing resistance capabilities from all other bacteria around it. It's this smart that it could, it could put together this resistance island that makes it resistant to almost every antibiotic we have available. Facing a bug resistant to many current antibiotics, doctors and patients are sometimes forced to turn to toxic cures that might kill the bacteria, but could risk additional harm to a soldier's health. And to guess, because test results come back very slowly, whether bacteria has merely colonized on the patient's skin or actually gotten into a wound. If it's colonized and I overtreat him, I could damage his kidneys. If he's infected and I ignore that and say it's colonized, he could die. In my next report, details on the dangerous dilemmas of treating soldiers and Marines infected with Acinetobacter from those who faced it firsthand.